now, you little brat. We want your seat. Sorry, my parents pre-booked this seat. Oh, your rich parents booked this seat for you. R slash Entitled Parents Our first story we'll be reading today. Entitled mom holds up bus for over 30 minutes to get food for her kids, ends up getting kicked off. From user Virtriol. After that, you know I'm your boss, right? Entitled kid and entitled mom try to get me fired for not rewarding entitled kids' rudeness. From user Takuya WC. And after that, entitled mom and her kid want my window seat on an airplane. From user Elsa is awesome. And after that, a Pokemon battle got me an adopted son. From user the mega Pokemon guy. And then we'll be finishing up with. My twin sister gives birth and her husband tries to accuse her of taking his moment away right after the birth. From user Junebug85. Thank you so much to our authors. And if you're an author who would like to hear me read your stories, please submit them to the r slash Mr. Reddit subreddit. And welcome to the newest members of the Re Army, Kaimaru, Andy, and Litos. And if you're new, join the Re Army by subscribing for new stories from Reddit every single day. Entitled mom holds up bus for over 30 minutes to get food for her kids, ends up getting kicked off. Hey guys, first time poster here. I was telling this to my roommate and they told me to post it here, so here we go. For a bit of background information, I live a good three and a half hours from my dad and mom and stepdad. I can't drive, so when I need to go up to them, I usually get a bus ticket since they're relatively cheap and I've never had a problem with them. Since it's a long drive, the bus takes a small break at a city about 45 minutes away from my town. When this happens, the bus will pull up to a gas station that also is one of the bus stops, and the driver will announce where we are and that we'll be there for 10 to 15 minutes so we can get out and stretch our legs or go to the gas station to use the restroom or buy some snacks. When this happened, I was heading back to my town, so I've already been on the bus for a few hours already. When I first got on, I was the only one, but at the other stops before the gas station, some other people got on. No one's super noticeable, but I wasn't really paying too much attention. Mainly students and people my age, but there was also, what I assumed to be, a mother and her two kids. I was sitting in the very back with my earphones in and playing on my Switch, so again, not paying too much attention. Anyways, we get to the stop and the driver announces where we are and that we're taking a small 10 minute break so we can get out and do whatever. I stay in my seat since I'm pretty deep into the game and don't need anything, but notice some people get off of the bus, including the mom and her kids. About 10 minutes pass and the bus driver gets back on and starts counting everyone. I'm pretty sure he has a list of everyone, how many people that's supposed to be on the bus, and gets back to the front of the bus and announces he's missing three people. Hint, it's the mom and her kids, so we can't leave until they get back. Great. I go back to playing Breath of the Wild on my Switch. I'm not super bothered since I think they'll be back soon and the buses have outlets so I can charge my phone and switch. They get back 30 minutes later. I'm not sure if the bus driver called them or something, but when the mom steps on the bus, the driver is obviously upset and asks her where she was. The conversation went like this. I have an APD, so this isn't word for word. Ma'am, where were you? We've been waiting for half an hour. We were getting food. My children are hungry, and we stopped for a break. She motions to her kids, who both have bags from a fast food joint. The break is ten minutes. You were gone for forty. Please try to not hold up the bus again. I have a schedule to follow. You're free to stretch or use the gas station for a bathroom break or snacks, so please don't do that again. This is when all heck breaks loose. Wow, my children need real food not chips and whatever crap that place has. If anything, your breaks should be longer. Sorry, ma'am. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And if I get behind on one trip, I'll get behind on the others. Please take a seat and I'll start driving. No. This is unacceptable. I'll have you fired, you... Insert many inappropriate names here. Ma'am, one more time. Sit down so I can continue driving. No. I'll get you fired. Okay, fine. Get off or I'm calling the police. Fine. Call them. I'll get you deported. The bus driver was Mexican and had an accent. So he calls them, 
They show up within a few minutes, and bus driver and entitled mom and her kids get off to talk to the police, so I'm not sure what they said. But after a few minutes, she storms onto the bus, grabs her bags, and stomps off the bus. Seriously, the whole bus was shaking. I asked the guy a few rows in front of me what happened out there, and the police obviously took the bus driver's side and told entitled mom they'll find her a way to get to her location, but she can't use this one. She cursed up a storm at them, uh, but then they just told her to get her bags and come with them. After she and her kids left, bus driver got back on the bus, apologized for the wait, and started driving again. The rest of the ride went smoothly, and I got back home late, but overall okay. Uh, the end, I guess. Next we've got... You know I'm your boss, right? Entitled kid and entitled mom try to get me fired for not rewarding entitled kid's rudeness. Hello everyone, this is my first post on anything, and I didn't think I had a story to contribute to this lovely thread until I read enough of them to realize that I actually do have something to share. Tis a long one, so I apologize if you read all of this. Too long didn't read at the bottom. To preface this all, I used to work in an after-school care. So once the kids in my primary school, elementary school, had finished school for the day at around 3-ish, about 60 to 70 kids would then come over to our building on campus and chill out until their parents came to pick them up around 5.45 p.m. We would give them afternoon tea and then watch over them as they pretty much just play games and do art and crafts and such. A lot of the kids that we looked after were full-time kids, meaning that we had them five days a week, and most if not all of the holidays from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., meaning that all in all, I'm spending a lot of time with other people's kids as a sort of pseudo-guardian, parent, role model. So using manners and general good behavior is extremely important to me as it helps to inform the rest of their lives. During my time here, I had an interesting run-in with an entitled parent and their equally, if not more, entitled son. Bear in mind that this all happened at least four years ago, so the details might be a bit hazy but such an obvious lack of respect from both parents and children made this encounter stay in my mind. We've got the entitled parent, entitled kid, me and the head supervisor. Me, playing with a soccer ball in the school hall with a few other kids. Entitled kid comes up to me and grabs my shirt. Give me your ball. Uh, sorry man, we're playing with it now, points at other kids. But you can jump in the game if you want. I say give me the ball. Sorry, kid, not with an attitude like that. However, if you want to join in the game with us, by all means. You know I'm your boss, right? <laughs> Excuse me? Give me the ball now, or I'll have you fired. I was flabbergasted at such a blatantly rude attempt to intimidate me. Once again, no deal, but thanks for playing. Entitled Kid storms off and I think nothing of it until later, closer to home time. Entitled parent joins the battle and confronts me. Why did you steal the ball off my son? What the heck were you thinking? Oh, is that what he told you? No, I was already playing a game with a group of kids when he demanded that I give him the ball we were playing with. Now, had he asked nicely and used his manners, I would have considered it and I would have started a different game. However... I don't reward disrespect and rudeness here. He doesn't have to use his manners. You're getting paid to do whatever you have to to keep him happy. You've ruined his day and mine. I hope you're happy. I'm going to have a word with your supervisor. You're not fit to look after children. At this point, I'm pretty incensed about being told I'm not fit to look after children, so I go off on this lady. Me? Listen, lady. Polite mode slightly turned off. I don't reward bad behavior. If you don't like how I do things here, then by all means, there is a fine after-school establishment up the road that will be more than happy to accommodate you and your family. Bear in mind, no one would put up with such rude behavior. How dare you! We've been here for years. You can't talk to me like that! Storms off and starts talking to Head Supervisor. Head Supervisor, a very fair... Kind, but firm lady, doesn't have a bar of it though, as this isn't the first time Entitled Kid had been acting up. Head Supervisor calmly explains to Entitled Parent that she supports my decision, and that if they indeed do have a problem, then they should try the other after-school care program up the road. 
we had a waiting list of about 30 kids, so replacing them wouldn't be an issue. Entitled Parent, after finding out that there was a higher chance of being kicked out of the program rather than me being fired, stormed out of the office with Entitled Kid in tow. This wasn't my first battle with crappy parents, and it certainly wasn't my last. I'm glad I didn't get fired as well. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Next we've got... Entitled Mom and Her Kid Want My Window Seat on an Airplane So, I was reminded of this story while booking my flights for an upcoming holiday this summer. I study languages, and over the last few years I have attended several language courses abroad to help me with my studies, and these required me to fly to the country alone, where I met immediately at the airport by either my host family or a school representative. I did this from the age of 14, and although this was scary to start with, I got used to it quickly and I do it often. Anyway, this was one of those times, and at the time I was 15, going on 16 years old. On this particular airline, you could pay a little extra, about six pounds extra, to pre-book your standard seat, to book and select your seat in advance, and my parents had done this and booked me a window seat. If you don't book online first, you just get assigned one randomly at check-in. Well, I find my seat and sit down get out my phone and put my earphones in to listen to music. It wasn't a long flight at all, maybe one and a half or two hours, and get ready to wait. Well, suddenly, I feel a tap on my shoulder and turn around. There's an entitled mom with your Karen haircut and her little brat, about five, standing there. Our cast. We've got the entitled mother, the little brat, the flight attendant, and me, the majestic empress. Excuse me? You are sitting in our seat. Let me check my ticket. Uh, this is 17A. It's my seat, and it's on my ticket. Well, we specifically requested a window seat for my precious son, and they didn't give it to us. We were assigned 17B and C, and my son deserves your seat more, because you're just a bratty teenager. Mommy, I want to sit by the window. Entitled mom to her son. Don't worry, I'll sort it out. Move now, you little brat. We want your seat. Sorry, my parents pre-booked this seat, so it's mine. Oh, your rich parents booked this seat for you. Bear in mind that pre-booking a standard seat only cost a few extra pounds. We couldn't afford it, and little brat deserves your seat more than you. Where are your parents? Why are you here by yourself? You should just go and sit with your parents. Uh, my parents are at home, and I'm flying alone. You're way too young, so you must be flying as an unaccompanied minor. I wasn't. My parents had checked with the airline, and they said that due to my age, that it was okay for me to fly alone without a flight attendant watching my every move. So I'll just ask the flight attendant watching you to move you, because you're disturbing us. Calls over the flight attendant. Hi, how can I help you? This girl took our window seat and is refusing to move, and she insulted me and my son. She's also flying alone, which is illegal because she's too young. Flight attendant turns to me, noticing my age and lack of parents. Hey, what happened? Are you flying alone, and how old are you? Yes, I'm flying alone, but I'm 15, almost 16 years old, and I'm being met as soon as I get to the airport. Oh, that's fine. Can I see your ticket to make sure you're in the right seat? I show her my ticket. Ah, yes, that's fine then turns to Entitled Mom. Sorry, it appears she is in fact in the right seat, as she pre-booked it via our website. Well, my son is younger, and deserves it more. Yeah, okay, but she paid for it, and you didn't, so it's hers. But that's not fair. I want it. Well, if she's being a pain, I can move you up to the front, where there's a few empty window seats. Also an area with extra legroom. Yes, of course we'll take the empty seats. Uh, no, I was talking to the girl. You can have her window seat and she can come up and sit in the front of the airplane so she isn't disturbed, and also so I can keep a bit of an eye on her because she's under 16, and I'm sure her parents would want that even though they didn't request it. I can just make sure she's okay during the flight. But that's not fair! Well, you get the window seat you wanted, so why are you complaining? I gladly took up her offer and packed up my carry-on bag, just a smallish rucksack, and got to enjoy the extra legroom. The flight attendant was extremely nice 
and mostly left me to my own devices, only checking in a couple of times, and made sure I knew where I was going and had someone to pick me up at the airport when we landed. Upon landing, I was met by a school representative at the airport and was taken straight to my host family, where I was fed some delicious food as soon as I arrived, so I quickly forgot about it. That family was amazing, and I still refer to the woman as my Spanish grandmother to this day. I loved them so much that I even returned to stay with her again the following year for an entire month instead of two weeks like this time. They were my favorite family by far. I'm going on another course, but for adults this time, in another country this summer, and I was reminded of this story whilst booking my flights, as they are with the same airlines as this story. Let's just hope I don't bump into another entitled mom and her little brat, as I have pre-booked my window seat again. Also, this happened a few years ago, and I am 19 turning 20 at the end of this year, so I will no longer be flying as an unaccompanied minor. Next we've got... A Pokemon battle got me an adopted son? Cast. We've got me. We've got the entitled kid. We have a timid kid and the entitled mom. So, about three years ago, I was shopping in my local mall. After a while, I decided to take a break and took out my 3DS and booted up Pokemon Moon. I had just beat the game and wanted to catch them all to complete the Pokedex. Most of my team I had owned since 2009, transferred from another game. This will be important later. So about five minutes goes by when a wild entitled kid appeared. He looked about seven and his mother followed quickly behind and his older brother, timid kid, quietly stood next to his mother. The following conversation went down. Mommy, look, it's the same game I have. So it is. Mommy, give me my game right now. Entitled mom hands over the 3DS and the kid gives me a cocky smile. Excuse me. Yes? I want to battle you. Sure. Just don't cry when you lose. I know it was harsh, but I knew how kids could be. Entitled kid and I begin to battle. My team. Chomper, Pulse, Bluey, Slash, Drogon, and Sandcroc. Entitled kid's team. Tauros, Marowak, Machoke, Snorlax, Greninja, and Infernape. It was a pretty easy battle. I swept through him using Bluey and Pulse. At the sight of my shiny Umbreon, hence the name Bluey, he immediately started demanding that he wanted it. I quickly denied his request, telling him how long I owned Bluey, seven years at the time. He stormed off and his mother turns to me. How dare you! What? I beat your son fair and square. No, you cheated. How did I cheat? You stole those Pokemon. The timid kid was like, Mom... Please stop shouting. Entitled mom slaps her own son. Don't talk back, you little crap. Timid kid begins to cry quietly. Entitled mom walks away to find entitled kid. Timid kid just sat down next to me, wiping his tears. Are you okay? Does she always hit you? Timid kid in a quiet voice. She does it a lot. It really hurts. He then invited me to a battle. I accept and go a little easy on him, as his team was kind of bad, and I felt bad. Timid Kid's team. Rowlet, Ryolu, Hippowdon, Haunter, Persian, and Charmander. After the battle, the following conversation began. Timid Kid, after losing. Dang, I lost again. Your team isn't too good, is it? No, it's because I have to give all my good Pokemon to Entitled Kid. Does your mother force you? Yeah, she doesn't really like me too much. Me, examining his team. I notice you have a Haunter. Would you like me to evolve it for you? How does Haunter evolve? Through trade. I can give you a couple of good Pokemon if you want. There's no point. Entitled Kid would just take them all. What Pokemon does he like? All of them, unless they look too girly. I have lots of girly Pokemon. Shows him my Togekiss. Wow, that's so cool. I quickly trade it to him along with a lot of other Pokemon. Thank you so much. It's no trouble, kid. Why not battle Entitled Kid when he comes back? Entitled Kid returns without his mother about ten minutes later. What are you doing? Uh, j just battling. I want to battle you. I will destroy your trash team. Timid Kid gives a half smile and nods. Timid Kid's new team. Togekiss, Gengar, Hippowdon, Flareon, Lusario, and Mimikyu. 
The battle was over in five minutes. Timid Kid's new team demolished Entitled Kids. Entitled Kids started screaming about how Timid Kid didn't deserve to win. Entitled Mom comes running and yells at Timid Kid. How dare you do that to your own brother? So he's allowed to attack me and upset me? You don't know the meaning of upset. She tries to slap him, but I step in the way. <coughs> Lady, if you think you can hit your kid, you must be dreaming. Are you trying to kidnap my child? No, I'm trying to stop you from hitting him. Entitled Mom seemed offended and called the police. They arrive in two minutes, and after a lot of arguing, Entitled Mom was sent to jail and her kids were taken away. Entitled Kid was given to his father, but because nobody knew who Timid Kid's dad was, he was put up for adoption. And guess who took him? Me. So now I have a wonderful son who enjoys Pokemon as much as me. And our final story of the day. My twin sister gives birth and her husband tries to accuse her of taking his moment away right after the birth. Hey people, this just happened a few days ago and I'm still wrapping my head around it. I'm very borderline on whether this is entitlement or if my sister was being too possessive and not understanding. I'll let you be the judge. Sorry in advance for the formatting. I'm on mobile, etc. So my twin sister just gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, and I was invited to the birth along with the father and his mother to witness this miracle. My sister was one and a half weeks past her due date, and my sister was ready to get past this part in her adventure into parenthood and begin the next as a new mother. The day was here, and I got the call at 3 a.m. that she was admitted to the hospital and was 5 centimeters dilated, and contractions are about 6 to 7 minutes apart, so I tell my husband and I head out to be with my twin sister. She was present for all my children's births, and I didn't want to miss hers. When I arrived, she was in full active labor and was just about to start pushing. I took my position at her side, and the father was on her other. We each grabbed a leg, and within 10 minutes, she was here. So beautiful and perfect. Immediately, the doctor put her on my sister's chest and we all started taking pics and telling my sister what a good job she did. After about five minutes, father cut the cord and went directly to my sister's side to kiss her. The conversation went something like this. When are you going to let me hold her? Oh yes, please, I want to hold her next. I want to meet my grandbaby. She got up and began trying to squeeze herself between her son and my sister. The doctor says, let's give her some time to bond with her before we have to take and examine her. No, I really want to see her, my sister says, in a moment. No, you have had her long enough. She's supposed to be half mine, remember? Don't shout. I just wanted to meet her. I have been waiting so long. No, no, you've had your moment. I deserve mine now. He begins to grab her from my sister's arms. Have you gone mad? Why are you being this way? Give her to him now. He has a right to see her. The doctor says, Hey, now this is unacceptable. I'm going to need the family to leave except the father if he wishes to stay. No, I have a right to be here if her sister does. Pointing at me, but I was already grabbing my bag and kissing my sister and going to wait in the waiting room for her text that I could come back. I'm leaving now, so come on, let's give them some space. No, I'm about to have my moment and I want my mother to take photos. He turns back to my sister. Give her here, now. The doctor says, Listen here, I understand you want your moment, but your wife here has been carrying this infant for almost 42 weeks, and at the moment, her needs are kind of more important than yours, young man. And you, father's mother, need to leave this room now. How dare you, as a mother, try to take this moment away from another? Shame on you. Hey... We apologize, but we are not leaving. It's you, guy, who will be going. Pointing at all the medical personnel and doctor needed there to examine the health and well-being of the newborn baby. My sister looks at the father. Leave now, both of you. This moment is ruined because of your tantrum. Get out. You two will have your moment when the doctors are through examining her. She then passes my precious niece to the nurse, who took her to be wrapped and weighed and examined. Fine. He and his mother left the room, left the floor, and even left the hospital, and didn't return or call until two days later to pick up my sister and their new daughter. I was told that he apologized sincerely and finally got his big moment, and my beautiful sister and niece are both doing very well. They have been married for four years prior to this baby, and I have never seen him act like this. 
and I've never met his mom until now, and she didn't make a very good first impression. I'm still borderline if this is what I would consider entitlement. Only because it's true. The father does have an absolute right to meet his new child, but the way he went about it trying to grab at her when she is fresh out of the womb, trying to kick out the hospital staff, and how he left and didn't come back or even call to check up on his wife and newborn. I'm very much puzzled by it and would love some input. Update. So we totally appreciate all the comments and input. My twin and new niece made a pop-up Skype session and we read through all the comments and she is going to create an account tomorrow so she can read through the recommended subreddit pages. She wants me to thank everyone for the support and inform everyone that it is true that her and her husband are different behind closed doors and agrees that mother-in-law is the cause of 99% of their problems. She says they are talking about counseling and realizing that his behaviors is a top of discussion for their sessions. Give Mr. Reddit a thumbs up on this video, or I'm going to take your baby and give it to my son. And congrats to our re-generals of the day. Kanata the Cat Demon, Isabella Wolf, Sean Bateman, and Lucrative Spuds. That's all for now, but don't be blue. I'll be back soon with more stories for you. Remember to listen to Mr. Reddit every night, so your dreams will be wonderful like you are and bright.